This is the Friday, October 4th, 2013 version of the Market Plus segment. Joining us now is Tom Fitzenmeyer. Tom, welcome back. Thanks, Mike. We've got a number of questions here from a lot of our viewers. Uh, people are curious about the weather. As we watch the series of blizzards farther west, uh, tornado watches and warnings in Nebraska and Iowa, and then this threat of the uh, tropical storm rolling up into the Gulf Coast states, what effect should we be anticipating in the futures markets come next week? I, it, it, that, that could somehow have some effect on the crude oil. As a matter of fact, you saw it in the gasoline f Arbob uh, futures at the end of the week where they were, there was some concern about the refineries. It was kind of interesting in the crude and gasoline markets, this government shutdown and the fear of the impact it could have on economic activity uh, was tending to depress the, those, those energy markets except for gasoline, which found some pretty good support because of this uh, potential weather for it. If, uh, if uh, Tropical Storm Karen turns into a hurricane, you might see some refineries shut down. So um, that, that's, that would be the one area where I'd think it'd be per, have a, a direct impact. Okay, and crew, we're trading just a little over 103. And it seems like we've come down a lot from sort of yeah. the Middle East calm. Right, we had all that concerns. Syrian whatever, pump, pumped into the market, premium, I guess you'd say, pumped into the market. As that's gone away, that's part of it. The, the other part of it is, is the perception on whether the Fed's going to stimulate or not. If, if they're going to continue to stimulate, that's going to tend to be price supportive. Uh, if, if, they, if not, if there's some compelling reason for them to start to pull back, that's going to that's gonna have some effect too. So I think those two have been the ba main big factors. Oil production ha has been quite strong. Uh, matter of fact, I think the Wall Street Journal had a front page article saying the U.S. is, uh, is now the number one um, oil producing country in the world. So I mean, we're, we're really ramping that up. The Dakotas are credit to that. Um, that opening up of the Keystone Pipeline from, from Cushing down to the Gulf Coast uh, has had some effect on those markets. So, um, yeah, w weather and those factors have, have combined to, to make that market kind of interesting. Yeah, and, and supported here in the short term anyway with this weather. Right. Now let's take a look at the commodities. Uh, we've, got a, we've got a question here from Tim in Crookston, Minnesota, and he's, he's asking, looking at the quarterly stocks report, the USDA found more 2012 soybeans, yet old crop basis remains very, very strong. What's going on there? Well, number one, they didn't find all that many. It was only like 18 million bushel. Number two is we were tight last summer. It really, ultimately, it doesn't matter what the USDA said. It's, um, it's what matters is how many beans are available. And obviously, those beans that were remaining, that 125 million or 140 million, whatever it turned out to be, were in, were in very tight hands. The farmer wasn't willing to sell them. They were holding on to them, hoping for, for more improvement. And, and so you had a tight situation. I don't, I don't know that, that that stocks number really ultimately, when things get that tight, makes that much difference. And, and certainly not at the local co-op level when they're trying to right. and, pro meet and their the processors are re were really had a strong demand for beans and were paying up to get them. The farmer thought he had them in the driver's well did have them in the driver's seat was in the driver's seat all summer and and so he had a strong basis. All right, and that's going to continue until we begin to see real no, uh, right. new crop supplies you, rolling you've in. You've really seen that erode here over the last two weeks as harvest has picked up, three weeks really. And, and I think you're going to continue to see more pressure as we, as we move into the... For, like I said on the show, the farmer is incentivized to sell beans and not corn so much. So that's going to tend to work against you on that basis too, at least in the short run here. Now, maybe by the end of the year, uh, that could snap back after everything's kind of locked up. But in the short run, it's going to be a problem. Okay. Now, speaking, uh, you mentioned new crop. And Shea and Ames is curious about, uh, again, how will the shutdown affect uh, bean futures with no USDA reports and uh, asking about the higher yields we're hearing so far coming off the combines. Are those going to continue? Well, it's, it's been my perception that that's exactly right. The, the early yields, particularly in the southern areas and as we move north, have been good. Now, the beans that have been plant harvested have mostly been beans that were planted on time. So you would expect them to, to do well. Now, all I've heard for 30 or 40 years is that month of August is the critical month for the production of beans, and I can't imagine August being any worse. So I guess I'm still a little uneasy that those, whether, about whether or not those yields are going to hold up. I mean, we've only harvested 12 to 14 percent of the beans, so there's a big chunk of them we don't know about yet. 
And, and so I, I'm, not, I'm not inclined to get in a big hurry. Now, this is one area where we're going to kind of miss those reports on Monday, knowing to the harvest progress reports to know kind of where we're at there. Um, so that's going to, again, introduce some uncertainty to the market. The trade will just be uh, doing windshield tours, I imagine, to see how we're doing. Yeah, we're going to have to rely on private and more anecdotal harvest results to sort of uh, guide us on how, how we proceed the next week or two or until uh, the government starts gets back in action. And we start seeing those reports again. Yeah. Now, as, as we're talking about uh, the tight supply in beans, we saw throughout 2012 and into 2013, uh, Dave in Sycamore in Illinois is asking, can the tight supply and demand for beans keep the corn market supported this year? Is there a link between the two? Well, there's a, there's a loose link. I, I, I think, uh, like, again, I alluded to on the show, so the South American crop and beans, is so, they're, they're on the verge of being, or maybe are the number one producer of beans in the world. Uh, so they have a big influence on the, on the beans. We're still sort of kind of in the driver's seat to some extent in corn production. Uh, so I, I think it's certainly possible. I mean, you look at it in the wheat, you got wheat two, two, three bucks above corn, you can have the same thing happen in beans. You could have, and corn, you could have beans rally and corn just sit here and, and do nothing quite easily. Okay. All right. So there's not a tremendous link and, and we'll just have to see how it now, plays out. Now, where the link will show up is as, as farmers are making the decision on what to plant next spring and they're really watching those differentials. Like, like I said, the, uh, the old crop differential is almost three to one of beans, so it certainly favors, but mm -hmm. when you're making a decision what to plant, you're looking at next year's, and that, that ratio is down to 2.3 to 2.4, kind of bounced in that range, which is kind of normal for the relationship between corn and beans. So, so beans aren't out there aggressively buying any more acres from not, the Not yet. Now, maybe that's going to change through the winter, but it certainly isn't the case now. All right. That, that's, why, that's why I was so adamant about uh, making, making some sales on new crop corn, because that tends to favor corn, and ultimately, if the if the egg acreage is, it comes out and we stay at those ratios, you're gonna you're gonna plant more corn and really be buried in corn. Yeah, yeah, and just see that slide continue. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Tom. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate you being with us this week. Thanks to all of you for uh, sending us your questions via Facebook and Twitter. Please continue to do so, and we'll continue to get expert analysis uh, right to you. Thanks for watching, and have a great week.